Good evening, fam, and we're back for another take, another look at the Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion part two. And I want to say it sucked. It didn't even make it on the radar scale. But if we had to tell who was the main player, who was the MVP of tonight's presentation that Bravo Entertainment, True Entertainment gave us. Which was nothing but fake, foolery, fuckery, fraudulent, piece of shitty playback that they gave us for a reunion for part two. I mean, we could have just, hey, kept, they could have did it in one taping, okay? One long taping. Because this episode between Candy and Nene and them both getting muted half of the time they were talking was a shame and a scandal you see what i'm saying you hear what i'm saying it was a complete mess but the two mv players uh mvp players in my book for tonight's episode reunion two of the real housewives of Atlanta, was andy cohen and none other than portia williams once again okay andy cohen was asking the tough questions okay yes he was he was asking the tough questions from kenya to portia and even a little bit of uh, Cynthia. Okay. He was asking the tough and hard questions. And when he got to Portia. Talking about Dennis McKinley. And him fooling around. Or being out at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. With some women after a club party. Honey. Portia stood in her shit. She said I didn't like it. Showed it. Had some words about it. But we good. We good. We might have just a small wedding. It ain't going to be televised. I'm like, damn, I guess Bravo, well, due to the coronavirus, you can't really be putting a lot on tape or, or having a lot of people um, in your space due to infection and, you know, trying to keep safe, uh, six feet apart from each other. Uh, what do you call it? Safe distancing from one another. So I could see. But he said that prior, I believe, to we having anything come up with the coronavirus. He he, he wasn't feeling no way. <laughs> then he said he feeling nobody that ain't down with him. <laughs> that ain't down with him like four black tie. He ain't giving up. Not now plate. Because them plates be costing at weddings, honey. Woo, didn't say I ain't with it. I ain't with it. These folks done dogged me, done told these tabloids about me, got me looking all crazy. But yeah, I'm doing some of this shit to make them want to talk. But damn, they won't get off my ass. That's pretty much what Dennis said. He said, I ain't feeding no people that going to be talking about me and stirring up the pot. Instead of trying to get me out the pot, they stirring up shit. He said, I ain't feeding them. <laughs> but I was so proud of Portia. Portia, Portia, Portia. Honey, she may be young in this game. She probably done stumbled through more than standing on her feet. She done got up, dust herself off plenty of times, and still stood in her shit, said what she said about it, and she done moved on. And she's still rocking with Dennis McKinley. Now, if that ain't love, that's fool's love. But if that ain't love, Dennis better keep up. <laughs> Even if he just have her for babies, honey, because he ain't going to get nobody like Portia. He ain't going to get nobody else like Portia. But anyway, if we must go on into this fake foolery, fuckery, fraudulently shitty of the um, reunion part two they gave us, let us go. Let's go partake of it. See what we come up with. Maybe we can enjoy ourselves. Or it might be the quick, fast, and hurry video that you ain't seen me put out in a long time. Because you know I'm long-winded. I like to talk. But then we might take care of this in 10 minutes, y'all, because it was just that bad. Okay? Well, we first go on to, uh, and Andy talks to Portia about her, uh, talking about them texts and this, that, and the third. And, of course, uh, Kenya, you know, trying to stir up more trouble, trying to make it seem like it wasn't in on them texts. What we said, we both said together. So, she was pretty much trying to put Portia in, uh, the same instance where she was talking about Cynthia as well. We're like, no, no, no. We don't want to hear what Portia said. We want to hear what you said, Kenya. So it was kind of some, you know, not really juicy, juicy text, or whatever, but it really it did get down in now where Cynthia should be questioning a lot more of her friendship and attitude that she has with Kenya more. Then um but it, you know, from what Andy gathered, the Texas did show that Kenya was talking about Cynthia, and they tried to play it. It was something dealing with evil, and all of it kind of looked uh, suspect. But either way, however it goes, whether evil was in the mix as well, 
kill you had no business texting Portia talking about uh, Cynthia not checking Eva and all this kind of stuff from, uh, from talking about her real bad. So I'm like, okay, we got the gist of it. Kenya ain't going to stand up in her own shit. She ain't going to say she was sorry. And if she says it, we ain't going to really believe it. And that telephone, the person you're trying to reach has moved to another location. That Nene, she was all over this uh, episode with not being around. <laughs> it was like the reunion showed up, but Nene was just put on pause. Or she just want, just didn't want to show herself at all. I was like, Nene, you're too old to be doing this stuff. But it is what it is. But in regards to the text that Porsche was trying to air out, uh, Kenya's misdeeds behind her back. Cynthia just dismisses the text all together. She don't really care about it. It just is what it is. You know, that's how Cynthia is. We can't talk no much about her because she's going to stay neutral Cynthia. That's what I'm calling her now. Neutral Cynthia. Okay. Uh, then we got Andy asked Cynthia about Nene and their friendship. Um, to me, it seems like Cynthia's still confused on where the friendship be. But Nene is, is pretty much telling her, it ain't like what it used to be. It ain't like where it used to be. But it ain't where it was maybe <laughs> this season ago, okay? Or half this season. We talking. But probably after this reunion, when it comes to part three, we may not be talking again. But that's just Nene's showstopper mentality. That's what she do. When taping is over with, she go back to her corner. And she prayed uh, the ladies dust until it's time for them to actually come back and congregate with each other and film some scenes for this show. Okay, but <coughs> it kind of really did give me the tease this particular episode that Cynthia may actually be hanging up her her um, hair, her wig, and saying goodbye because it seems like she's going to be moving, in my opinion, to L.A. And maybe she could be on the, do we have a Los Angeles Real Housewives of Atlanta? I'm not sure. I don't think we do, but hey, maybe she'll get that talk show her and Mike Hill was talking about. I don't know. Says so it just need to be a stay at home mom now. Okay, and watch Noelle following her footsteps when it comes to I guess the modeling scene or whatever. Help her up there. Because since you ain't got too much here, but your sister running your wine celery factory or whatever you want to call it. I want to say bottom basement uh, look her, but you know, look her, but it just is what it is. Okay, but moving on from there, we got Andy takes the latest back to momhood. First, you know, it was Candy expressing to Nene when they had that little sit down luncheon when Nene was trying to get back with the girls, trying to see what she, you know, trying to pretty much get a feel on Candy and see if Candy would tell her how the ladies really feel about her and all that. And try to get some taping in, probably as well. But it shows us the scene where Candy tells Nene about she's going to uh, be having a baby through surrogacy and all that kind of stuff. Then they went to Kenya, uh, showing her with little baby Brooklyn doing their little thing. Then it went to Eva and her baby Maverick. And then it went on to Portia and PJ. All of them lovely with their babies. We moved on from there. And it asked about Noelle. Asked Cynthia about Noelle and her girlfriend. And they're living in L.A. Uh, Cynthia didn't really touch too much on it, just saying everybody will, everybody getting on her nerves, and it just is what it is, okay? I'm like, we don't want Cynthia to make a storyline with her daughter and her life, living it fluently, or how we want to say a lesbian relationship. We, we, we don't want to hear about it, okay? We really don't. We want to hear about you, Cynthia, because you ain't going to tell us the truth anyway. And well, could be in that relationship, ain't really nothing going on. She probably still looking at me too. You know, that, that's no way else business. You want know to say, I, we, we, we want to see what you're doing with Mike Hill, okay? That's where we want to go. That's where we want to approach Andy. Get off that storyline. Let them uh, two young ladies have their life and it be off camera. Uh, again, um, moving on, it says Andy asked Marla about her nephews. And of course, uh, uh, Marla still being mom, auntie, whatever, however you want to see it, doing a wonderful job from what she says and what the other ladies are saying. Then he gave her props, saying, Oh, she ain't spending that money on her like she used to. You putting it on them kids. I'm like, Nene, do I sense a little. Oh, jealousy <laughs> that uh, Marlo was, you know, 
spending her time however she wanted when she could and did whatever she wanted to do with her money and her many men or whatever. Well, you're a little jealous, Nene. But anyway, she's in a mom uh, scene right now. So she can't do all what she used to do in her past. Well, at least until her sister get out of her uh, predicaments that she's in. Okay, then we got Annie gets a, uh, gets a question about Kenya and Portia's friendship. And, you know, the, the two ladies are still going back and forth, this and that. And Andy pretty much say, it ain't no friendship. <laughs> y'all started out real well. But goddamn, you know, you and that Tane on hooked up now. And y'all pro against, um, what's her name, Kenya. And that's just how it rolls. So that little scene we saw with them starting season 12, you know, out with the kids, dressed up for the little Barbie thing that Kenya do through for Brooklyn. That's uh, water under the bridge. They status quo back nemesis. <laughs> they both don't like each other. Okay, but it just is what it is. Then we got Kenya talks about Nene. You know, I'm like, I'm, I'm getting the thing. Nene can't function without Kenya. And Kenya can't function without Nene. Because they both have their names in their mouths constantly. More so Kenya having it on Nene than Nene having it on Kenya. It just is what it is. I'm like... Where's Phaedra? Where's Phaedra? We need a play. We, we need a new group of women here. Because Tech Cannon, well, she never was a real player. But we, we dealt with her. She was like, um, she took Sheree's place. Because we couldn't have Sheree and Candy there. Because it's just like, okay, who's going to tell the best uh, bone collector story, okay? Because I'm just not getting with it. I, I, I'm not seeing. I'm like, where's can, can we put her on her show now? Cause that where she need to go. She don't need to be on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Cause she absolutely not giving us anything. But want to fuss with Nene and then want to call Nene every which way of a bitch she can, you know, get out her her uh, mouth. I'm like, come on now, damn. Your mom is in her seventies. Nene in her fifties. Can we just have a tad bit respect for Nene? Do we have to call her the bitch word? Can we think of something else like, oh, grandma, something that's gonna hit her hard? Like, oh, looking, grandma need to sit yourself down. That would hurt Nene more than likely than you calling her an itch. But anyway, it just is what it is, can. Then we got Andy asking you about the Shamil story about her, uh whatever story she had made up at um what do you call it Portia's March of Dimes celebration she had where they were honoring Portia and she was going to be a spokesperson for them um and he was like well, girl why you do that why you lie like that <laughs> I'm like Andy's sister instigator but I love it okay and uh Portia interrupts say to me I just an update recently just spoke with Tamia they haven't talked since that March of Dimes thing because she knew Kenya was talking out the side of her neck don't know which way it came from but she said no nah, they ain't talking that was Shamil said and that's currently <laughs> I was like god damn Portia spill us the tea with the cookies on the side okay spill the tea with the cookies on the side girl so of course Kenya was calling herself trying to come back with a get back but nobody really believed it what well, well, she was just talking out the side of her neck then Portia tells Kenya Shamil uh you know it's upset with her and she, they're not talking so don't even try to really contact her <laughs> anymore <laughs> and of course Kenya like whatever I said what I said I, I sent my receipts it's just see what it is okay then Andy, Andy asked Portia and Kenya are they friends now he said it doesn't seem that way because y'all been going back and forth, back and forth. So Andy just moved on because the ladies was just fussing with one another. He didn't want to hear. He said, we just going to move on. Ooh, child. Andy said, these women, these black women, Lord, what are we going to do with them? We asked for drama. We asked for all the nonsense. And they giving it to us tenfold over, tenfolds over. But anyway, Anna talks about Kenya coming back to the show and being messy from the Tanya situation and the cookie lady and putting her fiancé in all this stuff, uh, allegedly, that he was doing with the cookie lady behind Tanya's back. And then why would she mess up Marlo's event, wig, wig event? And they were just showing clips back and forth of what was going on and what took place. And Kenya, of course, you know she's going to be hush mouth, or she's going to try to explain. But they came for me, so I had to come for them. And Andy wasn't buying it. 
And then Nene said something, and can you call her the ugliest woman in the world? <laughs> I'm like, girl, names don't never hurt nobody. Names don't never hurt nobody, but it was just funny. Then Andy asked Kenya, why did she go for Marlo's business venture, her brand, when she don't like nobody coming for her, cos when well, not cosmetic, but her um hairline care and of course Kenya was trying to say oh those are two different things but she came for me just then th see that's what i'm saying that's why i don't like kenya people are like but well, why are you too hard on her why are you why are you so biased it's called kenya don't stand in her shit she always want to say well they came from me i just came back a little harder i'm like and some of the stuff don't add up the stuff that she do don't coincide how she blasts people i'm like girl you know come on you really could have hurt somebody, you know, how truth be told. You know, I was over there on Tanya's um, Instagram account, and she was doing a little Q&A on herself and Paul. And to me, it just don't seem like Paul is that interested in Tanya far as it being a marriage with a, a license, a piece of paper, and all that stuff that Kenya swears she has. And that other people would like... You know, stay out of her business, this, that, and third. No, when she put her business on Front Street, it's everybody's business. And we can freely talk about it. But, um, you know, Tanya was saying, oh, it's just a piece of paper. It's nothing. You know, trying to play the role. I'm like, girl, if that man died, would he have everything willed to you, baby? Would you be able, and I'm pretty sure you would be able to function without him and his money. It's just the the the, the the plain thing about it you know what i'm saying did he leave or do he have a living will do he have some documentation that says you get all of his assets when he dead and gone since he treating you like a wife he's um honoring honoring you like a wife it's just y'all want a silver union i mean it ain't a silver union where it's no piece of papers attached y'all know y'all good with what y'all doing because if that's the truth it's cool but are you oprah winfrey are you oprah winfrey honey oprah, oprah winfrey can make those things where she says she don't need a piece of paper because she got money she she you know had a large platform way back in the day She's been an editor. She's been a journalist. You know, she has all these claims and accolades. She got money. So, no, she didn't need to be Mr. Mrs. Graham, Mrs. Stedman Graham. No, he was really shown throughout his lifetime when he was messing with Oprah. Uh, he was called Mr. Oprah. <laughs> so, you in two different lanes, honey. You need that piece of paper. You deserve that piece of paper. That's why gays and lesbians have fought so hard for being recognized as partners or married because they could not um get their loved ones or their um their partners uh insurance benefits or their life and burial benefits because they were not legally married or they weren't recognized as a legal um um ceremony so yeah you you need them pieces of paper you need them with them being here as well as them being transitioned into another life you know you need that documentation you need that certificate to say mr and mrs or, or, or mrs and mrs or mr and mr you know what i'm saying you need that okay to be able to survive when your spouse is not with you anymore okay so just a little edification there when people going around talking about the side of their neck they don't need that but then you're gonna leave that person behind to pay off for your medical benefits all your medical bills all your death benefit bills where that money coming from yeah, that's right so hey it is what it is y'all go out there and get them silver units and you want to but yeah that'll get it on paper where you can get some when that person die all right but anyway moving on from there uh can you just love making excuses for her acts towards Tanya, she just really feel like it was blown out of proportion. This, that, that. No, Kenya, you was trying to destroy that lady as well as uh, destroy her relationship with that man by her even believing a tenth of what you were trying to say to her about her man. So she didn't really, you know, she may have heard it, went through her ear, went throughout the other ear, may have confronted Paula about it, but hey she feels she i don't think she's happy i think she really wants to be married but it's like it is what it is she done been with him 10 years i just hope she, they got everything where if she died i guess she give it to him all her assets that she will be leaving 
uh, and I hope he has the same done for him. Papers drawn up and say everything goes to Miss Tanya Sam, okay? If anything happens to me. But, hey, we're not in their pockets. We're not in their life. We're just being shown whatever they want to show us. So we can comment on it. Am I correct? Yes, I am. We moving on. All right, then we got um, Kenya asked Nene, do she deserve Greg <laughs> messing with the hell? Oh, Lord. Nene just pulled up a 180 and said, yeah, baby. I deserve it. Now, what about you? <laughs> Do you deserve what Mark is dishing out to you? Child, they were just talking about karma. And, uh, and that says, can, can you want expecting that? She didn't say nothing, couldn't say nothing, because Nene had put her to rest, okay? She played that game thinking she was going to come in there. Door, but Nene said, uh-uh, sh- the door is closed on your behind. Moving on from that situation, we got Cynthia says, uh, can you knew about the cookie later? And um, pretty much, uh, Cynthia did know about the cookie lady. <laughs> she even told Tanya she knew about the cookie lady. But she thought it would be a good time for her to come to Brooklyn's thing. And they hash it out. Not how it actually went down. But it is what it is. Just refurbish it. Okay, moving on from there. We got Kenya finally admits to us she does wear wigs. Okay, she she said it on, on national TV, we were watching and was hearing. She did say, I wear protective styles to protect my 24 inches. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so you want to miss some of it and then you want to uh, floss over some other stuff, gloss over some other stuff. We didn't care. We didn't, uh, didn't want to know how long your tresses was. Okay, your long tresses, Ken. You didn't have to put 24 inches, which I don't believe they had 24 inches either, okay? But it is what it is, okay? You're going to lie. You're going to straight. Yeah, you can't never just stand in your shit and just take it for what it was. Just like um, Andy was drilling a uh, portion of my dentist misgivings and his uh, manly behavior does not uh, make her look in a good light with her being the fiancé. She stood all in that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, Portia, go on and tell that man what you talking about, okay? Just say you love this man. You're going to stand with him through thick and thin, through thick and thin. Uh, through thick and thin, through thin and thick. It, it don't matter. She gonna be like Beyonce. Whatever Jay Z do to her, she gonna stay with him. <laughs> okay. And uh, pretty much, uh, poor say I'm gonna stay with Dennis McKinley. Yes, I am. Okay. We gonna work it out. We gonna work it out. We gonna work it out. Okay. <laughs> now what else? Ain't? What else you wanna know, baby? Answer. So, okay, girl. Okay. You want a dog for your life? Go ahead, honey. Roo roo. All right. But anyway, leaving that situation. Um. Uh, you got Tan- Tanya Porsche. They start getting on Kenya's nerves and talking about her, and they go to, you know, battling it out a little bit. Then we kind of even, you would try to say, you know, she was pregnant. That's why she ate up all the cookies. And Tanya was trying to tell her to shut up. She didn't want to hear nothing for her. So instead of her taking up for her, I just dissing the cookies all together. You said I ate every last one of them cookies. The only thing you could say, it was good, girl. <laughs> it was good. I'm like, Eva, you really need to be off the show, baby. You're not giving us nothing. But moving on, because we already know that. We got Tanya gets on candy, but about her not trying to take up her candy, tried to not see it for Tanya and say, you know, hey, we didn't know each other at the time. Candy said, when we, and I can't save you, honey. You got to take up for yourself. And Tanya was like, no, I ain't asking you to take up for me. I can take care of myself. She said, well, honey, they did it to me. And I had to take up for myself. One nobody trying to take up for me. I'm like, Candy, it wasn't no situation of you trying to take up for uh, Tanya or, or, or that. It was just the principle of the thing. And that's what she was trying to say. You know, you my so-called uh, confidant at one time. I ain't going to say we were real, like, thick and thieves, like um, me and Portia. But I thought we had an understanding. What, you know, what else? I can't try to say. She didn't, she wasn't trying to say it was Tanya she was talking about. But Tanya just went on and took the bait. So she just went on and said, I like, can't stop lying. You know, you were talking about Tanya. Just like Nene knows she was talking about Candy when it comes to Candy getting the show and Nene feeling some kind of way about it. I'm like, stop all this bullshit. Just say you mad. <laughs> You want to know why Candy keep getting all these these spinoffs and you ain't getting one. Just say it. Say, tell Andy. Put him on the spot like he put, put your ass on the spot. You know, you always feel like they getting rid of you. Anyway, go out with a bang, baby. Ask him the tough question. Why is Candy Burris getting another, yet another spinoff? And I can't even get one. I can't even get the initial one time, okay? We ain't going to talk about that Nene Wedding. That was fun, cool. Candy had one of those, but then she had a ski episode. Then, did she have something else? Yeah, I can't remember. 
I know the wedding. I know the ski episode. But I can't think of the other one. And now they finna give her one. I guess where she show off the OLG gang. And shit I don't know. Because without her family she wouldn't be seen. But they going back and forth. And then he calling her boring. Candy fussing. Talking about you know I'm embedded in your motherfucking brain. All this kind of stuff. I'm like oh Candy you, you making me cringe girl. Because like you talking to your mama. Not putting Nene out there. Because Nene what 54. But you know and, and what's his name. Miss uh, Mama Joy, she about 71, 72. But I'm just like, girl, you don't have to do that. Mm-mm. You could talk to me another way and get her quick, fast, and together sold up real quickly, you know. But just call her grandmama or something like that. <laughs> okay, but girl, you had to call her no bitch, okay? But anyway, um, they both just having, you know, it. And Andy ended up having to have to mute, mute them together so he could not hear them fuss no more because they weren't listening to him. But, you know, can't just took it like, you know, you're going to have an opinion. Just have one. She thought, I ain't had no opinion. It's because you didn't want to go against Kenya more. That's all it was. Because you know Kenya was wrong. But it is what it is. I know you do stand up uh, for Kenya a lot. But I have seen when you basically uh, tried to check um, Kenya when it came to Cynthia. So, okay. You got your priorities right, I guess, Candy. When you hang with the folk, you hang with. Okay. Then we got Cynthia. She's in the background looking at <laughs> When they pretty much brought the tea that Kenya was talking about her. And, she, you know, Kenya didn't have no get back to the clap back, right? So, Cynthia just over there looking mad. Like, she ain't got nothing to say. I'm like, Cynthia, you don't went past your age on the show, honey. You don't been here, been here, been here. You know, don't get me wrong, but they keep you for season 13. I'll still be on your team. Because, you know, I wasn't team Cynthia. But I've learned to grow with Cynthia. <laughs> I've learned to just accept her who she is. All of these many seasons, she's done been on Real Housewives of Love. She has been definitely consistent. She has stayed on that fence. She has been neutral. She has side with whoever winning. And I got to get that to Miss Cynthia. But Portia, she going to blow it up. She going to say what she want to say. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if Portia took this whole uh, young OG and be sitting on that throne calling it her show next. Okay? Because I don't see it for Candy. I don't see it for Kenya. I don't see it for Eva. Oh, no. No, my lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, no. Okay? But it just is what it is. Then we got... um. Andy asked about Todd and Kayla uh, to Candy, you know, how things are going on. And, you know, of course, I'm like, Todd was just in the, um, he was on his Instagram account showing us Kayla at a younger state. But he was saying he didn't know Kayla till she was in high school or, or, you know, in that era. Not when she was in middle school or elementary, but we found some shots that he put on his own Instagram account. Um, of Kayla looking much younger like she was in, in uh, elementary but Todd said he didn't get her to the latter part of her life I'm like the lies the lies the lies okay but anyway can go on and say they good they good they communicating they talking every day uh skyping each other you see what it is can keep that lie up okay then and ask can about todd and mama joy so they good and she's a hundred blaze you know she brought you know much joy they on a, they in a better place now <laughs> like candy who child you know sometimes when people had gap in between their teeth and their top uh teeth they had a gap in between his cost they said they lied a lot but Candy ain't got no gap. But she be lying. <laughs> Candy don't be telling us the truth. But anyway, moving on from there. Uh, Anna brings up Mama Joyce and her lunchbox. And everybody be tripping. And Portia takes up for Mama Joyce and Candy with regard to Todd. She said, you know, Todd just collateral damage in a sense. He can't get in between a mother's love and a daughter's love. Like Candy had said, her mama, you know, had her live a good life. She's always known what money was and, and, and being able to have and not have. And she just showing her mama love. She's going to always show her mama love. With, with, with Toss, um uh, opinion of doing it or not, she don't give a fuck. Okay, but she's going to take care of her man too. So, I'm like, okay, Candy. But like I said, Portia came in, swooped up and said, hey, don't get on Mama Joyce. Candy did it right. Go on, take care of your mama, honey. And I'm like, ooh. And Candy, like, looking surprised herself. I said, see, that? that's Portia. That's growth right there. That's why I can get with Portia. But the rest of these women over here, child, please, light a candle up for them. Because <laughs> they going to be sure to live. But Portia, she's in for the long haul. She in for the long haul. 
Uh, then we got Annie was trying to uh, await Kenya issue with Mark by talking with Eva about her daughter and her biological dad. And Eva gets into talking about domestic violence that the man, Kevin McCall, allegedly used to beat her and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh, Lord, I can see where this finna go. Even though he was trying to make a point to Kenya and how Mark has shown his lackluster interest in her in their marriage and trying to do anything about it that you know he's just not the man for you but it went south honey he was starting getting very emotional start yeah i'm like evil look i understand your plight this that and the third you know you saying you said it out your own mouth i heard you tonight that you know you were having fun you were young y'all went and did to do and you know became pregnant and you know it was a young impulsive type thing but y'all both stepped up and said you know y'all had a baby y'all raised a baby and then somehow he went left but if kevin do suffer from mental illness stop treating it like he's just crazy because he really may be chemically imbalanced to a point where he don't recognize what he be doing you know he have alter egos and stuff of that nature so he might be a true legit mental health person that needs to be evaluated properly maybe put on some medications and seek therapy talk therapy so will you be talking about sperm sperm he'll sperm down and you don't like him did that you know the man may have issues okay that goes beyond the natural norm of forgiving or not forgiving somebody and talking about them and dragging them so i i didn't get that I, I didn't get with you you know i know you may have had that feel of him um abusing you physically and mentally but my thing is is he okay mentally you know what i'm saying because you know not saying it was right what he did to you not saying that at all but let's take an accountability is he focusing on all decks of the cards with his brain so she kind of got too emotional and she just left the platform and then kenya gonna say like kenya really why are you always trying to be there for somebody and then they come for your butt and then you can be like well i was there for them i know you were trying to get the tea okay that's why i believe you well you should just let her go off camera get herself together because she had people at the house when she was taping that could have soothed her mood and told her to get back up there stand in your shit and, and finish your um reunion part two that's what it should have been said. But anyway, it just is what it is. Um, and as Portia about Dennis McKinley, about their relationship currently, Peach, uh, Portia uh, explained, you know, they're okay. Um, the incident with the four women or three women after the uh, nightclub saying they went out to eat. She knows other women. But she thought it was just going to be him going out, having a good time, and then bring his ass home. So, they had a talk about it. He admitted it was a bad scene to begin with. But she said, they quarantined, honey. <laughs> but so they quarantining. They together, honey. It come with a mate through thick and thin. She down. She a soldier for her man, child. I was like, oh, okay, go ahead, Portia. Oh, Portia said, yes, yeah, she did move too fast with um McKinley. But she loves him, and that's just it. And I'm like, okay, Portia, you, you know you got a no good ass man, and you standing by him, gone and standing your shit, okay, baby girl, I'm standing your shit. Then we got Eva comes back and talk about not talking about her child's donor anymore, and I'm like, okay, we're gonna move quick, fast, in a hurry, uh, from Eva. Then we got Candy tells Andy she didn't want to publicly talk about Portia and Dennis because of their friendship that they are trying to work on and, and Candy I mean uh, Portia could recognize the honesty and the sincerity and she's okay cool all right uh Candy tells Nene to go high in the lunchbox bitch okay because they arguing still they both arguing and uh can't get them in hush he, that's what the point when i was telling you he put them both on mute and uh portia and then he was trying to tell them to stop talking even even threw a little two cents in but they didn't care they just kept going after each other after each other after each other and just push that mute, mute button <laughs> he was like uh-uh they're gonna disrespect me and not listen to me shit we ain't gonna listen to their asses either and then nene Fine, you know, Andy finally brings them back. Nene tells Andy, Candy is boring. <laughs> she kept saying she's unforgettable, but she should have been saying forgettable. Candy is forgettable, but sometimes Nene be talking on and understand what the hell she be talking about, but it is what it is. Nene refused to see Candy as an equal, and that's just where it is, okay? 
and it shows clips of Kenya shading Cynthia. He wants to know what that all about. You know, of course, Kenya going to make an excuse. And it just goes on. Kenya never admits to her faults, period. Never have since she's been on the show. And I guarantee she will never, she never will until she leaves the show. Then, lo and behold, Nene leaves the show again. <laughs> She's going to get tired, I'm guessing. Because from what it seems like on scene with part reunion three, they're going to have Miss Yovana up in the camp. And I'm like, oh, Nene running from Yovana? What good news is that, honey? But she, she, she wrote something down, which wasn't about a hill of beans. And like I said, she didn't come back. So well, I guess we'll have to watch to see what part three will bring and, and why Nene ain't coming back or why she didn't come back. And they have a conversation uh, about Snake Gate and all that situation. And Cynthia was like, you know, Nene need to be here. Because I like Cynthia and Nene don't need to be nowhere. Because it's always going to be a he, she thing. You're going to always believe what you want to believe. Whether you want to believe what Nene said or not. It, it, I mean, just be over it like you were over uh Portia trying to tell you about Kenya when your friend and you didn't want to talk about it with her and Tanya. You want to just ease it under the rug like it never happened that Kenya could not possibly be talking about you to other people. So it just is what it is. You don't need to know nothing about Snake Gate. <laughs> just call the spade the spade and move on with your day. Okay. But that's all I had of the reunion, honey. That's all I had. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed it. Uh, if y'all didn't get a chance to see it, my perspectives, I'm telling you, came close to probably what you all were going to feel about it. It was fake foolery, fuckery. Pretty, pretty much a fraudulent activity going on now with them lies they were telling and one standing in their shit like Andy Cohen and Portia Williams do all day, every day. Okay, but that's my review. Y'all get down in them comments. Y'all tell me what y'all felt about it. Did you really feel that it was worthwhile? watching tonight or we could have just waited for part three and they could have put this whole scene this whole episode on mute okay but i'll tell i'll see y'all next video don't forget to subscribe like and share the videos and i will talk with y'all next video peace and i'm out <laughs>